Before we get started, um, is there anyone that has not seen a copy of our a brochure? There is a certificate for an hour worth of uh, consultation or any of our services. It's not a lead type of thing. We're not trying to rope, rope you into anything. We genuinely want to work with you for an hour at no cost to help solve a problem that you might have. Or anybody like a certificate? There we go. Anyone else? I don't know. Just pass that on now. You have one? There you go. Yeah, now don't cheat and I like know. try to get more. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have, but if you have yeah. two people that work for the same organization, you can pool yours. That's okay. You guys can put yours together. You, I mean, you, yeah, you, not that you we're here. We're not going to try to sell you more hours. It's just this is just something we want to do to thank you all for for coming to the conference and uh, for especially for coming to this uh, little party we're having here today. Can I can I work can I work it for my part? Yeah. And then give it to you? Huh? Oh, you are? You're gonna start. He's gonna start working. We're, we're loose here, so. <laughs> well, I'll just say welcome to Design Matters and turn it back over to my partner Keith. Yep. So uh well it's So you're starting? Three o'clock? Yeah. Can we? Is it three? And action. <laughs> so uh welcome to Design Matters. My name is uh Keith Strickland. Uh, with Red Bill now. I am a, uh, one of the co-founders and a software engineer. Uh, I've been working with Unload Apps about 16 years now. Um, and you can visit us at redpillnow.com to find out more to get in touch with me. Um, and I'd also like to introduce uh, Bob Cagri. He is uh, our new design and UX director, uh, the new guy at Red Pill now. The NFG. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, uh, and with that, I, I'm turning it over to Bob. Uh, so the first presentation is a Red Pill Now employee. This is. Yes. This is my yes. first Red Pill Now. So go easy on me, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I am Bob Cager. I've been doing this for about 30 years now, which is longer than I can believe. At least not being notes, of course. Not being notes. But uh, I have been a designer and um, have been designing websites since before um, many, many companies had their own domains or URLs. I remember going out to companies uh, suggesting that they should get a, a URL, and they said, what would we possibly need one of those for? So um, <laughs> that's, how, that's how long I've been doing this. Um, and just because I'm the new guy in town, um, I thought maybe you might like to know a little bit about me. My background is in, uh, for the past 20 years at least, has been in inter interactive design. Um, I've worked uh, with interaction design and experience design with AT&T. Uh, our brand new Center for Civil and Human Rights, if you haven't had a chance to visit that uh, facility here in town, I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful experience. Delta, Emory, General Motors, Renai Corporation, and Paper, the Woodruff, um, which I had the uh, pleasure of doing the branding for, and a company that was acquired by another company recently called Worldspan, that you all might have heard of. Um, just before we get going, I want to point out three things that I hope we accomplish today. The first thing is we want to challenge the way you look and think about notes. The second thing is we want to change the way that you approach your next project. And finally, we want you to understand the value of good design. It's one of the things I think is most misunderstood in, in the business of developing applications, uh, or websites, or any interactive um, media at all. We're going to start by taking a look at what this looks like from, the, from my perspective, from, from the designer's perspective. And then later, we're going to turn this over to Keith, and he's going to talk a little bit about what this looks like uh, from the developer's perspective. And hopefully that will help, uh, will, will help you um, understand how we approach things a little differently than most other shops. First, I want to start by, by saying that good design is not just making pretty pictures. Making pretty pictures might be part of a good design, but primarily good design should accomplish a business objective. Change an opinion, cause a reaction of some sort. Um, it's not just simply decorating. And as an example, I want to start up by saying that thoughtful design done really well can have a major impact on your bottom line. Does anybody know what that represents? <laughs> so the salary that I want. Three hundred million dollars. If I told you that good design 
could help a company improve its bottom line by $300 million in 30 days, would that impress you? Yeah. Okay. Depending on the company. Of course. That is the dollar amount that one simple design change increased uh, for a major e-commerce site who would rather not be discussed in this, um, or in the book that this data came from, uh, help them increase their, uh, their sales in just one month. And when I show you what the simple change was that came from the design team and how hard it was to get it through, um, you'll be amazed. That was the only thing affected by the design re recommendation. So in the checkout, there was a register button. And before you <laughs> and before you could place your order, you had to register online. Okay? And um, most of you who remember Amazon uh, back in the day, you had to register for an account before you could actually check out. Well, some very smart designers sat down and said, do we really want, uh, do, do customers really want a relationship with us? Or they just want to buy a product? And they found out that they just wanted to buy a product. So they rec made a simple re recommendation. Let's get rid of the register button and replace it with a continue button. And some language that said, mm -hmm. You do not need to create an account to make purchases on this site. Simply click continue to proceed to the checkout. To make your future pur purchases even faster, you can create an account after your checkout. In 30 days, revenues increased $300 million. <laughs> That's the power of good design. Good design can also bring you closer to your audience. I've heard some folks that tell me, you can't have, you can't interact really interact with your audience. You can't create a relationship with your audience. I disagree. Um, this is uh, the website that I designed for the Center for Civil and Human Rights, the folks I was just touting a few minutes ago. I want to say it again, shameless plug. I love these guys. Great facility down by the world of Coca-Cola. If you haven't visited it and you're going to be in town for a day or two still, please take the time and go visit the site. It will change your life uh, to actually walk through this and see this the exhibit in the story of Atlanta during the Civil Rights Movement. Um, before we designed this site, re redesigned this site, uh, they were struggling uh, to bring in enough traffic to sell enough tickets to even get the center opened. Um, we spent about six weeks looking at traffic patterns, analytics, um, traffic patterns within their site, talking to the people who are visiting uh, the uh, preview of the center. Um, and that was a key part of it, talking to the people who are actually visiting the center, understanding what their needs were, right? And the result of the redesign was that we increased traffic tenfold and ticket sales by 200% in 30 days, okay? That's good design. Now, in this particular case, good design also happens to be pretty, right? But that's not the point. The point is understanding what the needs of their visitors were prior to the redesign and making that part of our process, understanding the business case first. This is Renai. Uh, Renai are the guys that uh, invented the tankless hot water. Hot oh, water. Yeah. Right, you know those guys? Okay, great. So um, they're the number one retailer of this product in the world. They own the space. Uh, they said their online presence couldn't get any stronger. And we said we disagree. So we set out to do something that um, we had never done before. We created a proactive dealer search page and what we called um, a, oh, let's see, we called it a lead nurturing system. I forgot that first thing. So um, this is a, a, a location aware search index that allows any inquiry to be fed directly to the dealer as well as to Bernard themselves. And if there's a request that goes out to the dealer, that request is duplicated to a person at Renai, who then follows up with the dealer to make sure that they do exactly what they're supposed to do. Okay? All at once, completely automated. Um, we also um, do a few other things. We store the information in a, uh, a database, and every 30 days we reach out with permission to the people who have visited this site to see where they were in their purchasing uh, cycle. And depending on where they were, we would either drop, lower the priority or, or, or raise their priority and, until they purchased the product. The results of this system 
just by making a change in their search, which by the way, I wish I had it before, I'm sure I don't, it was horribly complicated, was that we, increased, we increased online leads by 200% and conversion, sales conversions, 30%. It meant a 2% global increase in sales. That's good design. It's good technology too, don't, don't get me wrong, but design is more than decoration. And so we have to agree to change the definition of design just a little bit. Usability. It's, it's right, it's, it's usability. It's, a, it's something that addresses both function and form as a single issue. It's a collaboration between the business team, the design team, and the production team. Right? So if we can all agree to that, then we can have a conversation about how we can really impact the projects that you, that you um, undertake. Pardon me one second. So I want to talk a little bit about um, a, method, a methodology for success, which requires a collaboration between, as I just said, the project owner, developer, and designer. These are usually done in silos, which is really unfortunate. It's hard to get everyone on the same page, everybody in the same room talking together. But a good design leadership, good technology leadership, and somebody uh, and a business owner who has uh, some, uh, some vision for where they're going um, can actually uh, be quite a powerful team. We start with the business case. And from my perspective, that just means listening. Right? We can complicate it with forms and all, all kind of formalities. But I think a good designer is, is, at, is at, at his or her best when they're listening taking things in, interpreting, making sure that they read back what they're hearing, completely understanding the need of the business, uh, of the business itself. Then the designer working with a programmer usually converts that business case into functional requirements. Okay? Now we're starting to get a little bit more formalized. We're documenting the functional needs of the site and most importantly the outcome of, the, of each of those functions. So it's one thing to say that we're going to click from here to here and we're going to uh, store something in a, in a database, but what is the outcome? What is the purpose of that once we do that, right? Then we develop sitemap and wireframes from the business case and from the functional requirements. Does anyone here not know what a sitemap is? Or a wireframe? Good. Good. Okay, just a couple of people? Great, we'll show you real quick. So this is a sitemap. Um, a sitemap is the first real design step in terms of the design of a site. It simply is a list of all, it's an outline of all the pages, uh, whether they're real pages or whether they're dynamic pages, um, and the relationship that they have uh, to every other page on the site. It's so we can help to start uh, creating a navigation. Sometimes this doesn't uh, translate directly into the UI, but in general this top level here would represent a, um, the, the, the top level of the navigation. And, and, all right, I interject here, Bob. Sure. And if you're, if you attended the Node.js site uh, from uh, Matt White, uh, or you're starting to work with modern JavaScript frameworks, this is also your your routing table. Right. Good point. Um, by the way, we're looking at a fairly static website here. These sites, especially when they're dynamic, can uh, these site maps can get uh, horrifically large. Uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 pages long. What's yes. the definition of dynamic? Uh, a site that's a, a page that's generated on the fly, that only exists if you click on something. If you click on something else, and it assembles maybe something from uh, two or three database tables and presents it onto the page. The page physically doesn't exist until you click on it. Oh, wrong way. So this is a a, a what? My voice just cracked, by the way. All of a sudden, I was 12 years old. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, um, a wireframe. A wireframe essentially is a sketch of the web page. That's all it is, or, or the application page. And it's, it's a, what we call a low fidelity uh, rendering, right? Uh, this can be changed very, very quickly. There are a lot of tools out there uh, to help you. I particularly uh, like a, my, a, a, a program called Balsamic. Uh, and then they have a, a, another a virtual um, online version called uh, My, My Balsamic. Also integrates uh, nicely with Jira at some levels. So for those of you who are, are um, used to working with Jira and Confluence. Um, but I, I use Balsamic. There's a bunch of other ones. 
This is a way to very rapidly take those, those um, pages that are represented in the sitemap and create some form around them. Okay, so we can see them, we can talk to the business team, we can say, hey, here's what we're thinking. Um, and then what's really kind of interesting is you can actually take and make all of these clickable so that they actually work like a, a real site. So when you're standing up in front of the business team and you're making a case for a uh, design or a workflow, they can actually see and, and, and play with it and get a sense of what it's going to look like. And you can do that in minutes rather than days or months. Okay? So the, the, the prototyping phase is incredibly important in good design, making sure that all of those uh, functional requirements and the uh, business case issues are met uh, firsthand. From these, we then create clickable mockups. And you're going to see um, uh, this was the wireframe for uh, a version of one of our products. This is for our, our portal. You'll see what the mockup looks like. So this is Red Pill Now's um, uh, notes portal. And you can see how similar it looks to the, the, uh, the, the uh, wireframe. This was created in two or three minutes. This, this took a little longer, but it's a Photoshop file. That's all it is. So now it's a high fidelity um, mockup. And we then take these screens and import those back into uh, the wireframing system to create a high fidelity mockup, a workable mockup. Okay, it's a great way to make sure that your ideas that sound pretty good up here and feel okay when you write them down actually work well when you see them and interact with them. Last, lastly, is, is um, using this type of methodology. Um, you forgot the, the, the gnashing of teeth between the designer and developer. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there is some of that as well. Um, we'll, we'll get to that gnashing of teeth in just a, in just a minute. Um, but um, what's really nice about this system is it also sets you up for something that uh, otherwise is, is somewhat cost, uh, costly and uh, difficult to pull off, and that's user testing. So if uh, anybody here ever been a part of a user, a user lab? Okay. Well, there are some really great virtual user labs um, online now. And they will take mockups created di directly from <coughs> um, Balsamic, and you can assign a group of people who, who mimic uh, your audience. You can define who, that, who, who they are uh, by age or by experience or whatever. And um, my favorite shameless plug to my friends at usertesting.com. Um, and you can actually uh, watch people interact with your site in real time. So they videotape, or they, they uh, videotape it, they digitally video the interaction. And you ask them to solve problems. So please tell me how to navigate to the, how to select a product, navigate to uh, the checkout, and place your order. Right? And you can actually watch them and listen to them in real time. Uh, and you can collect 10, 20, 100, 1,000 um, use cases uh, uh, within just a few days. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing product, and it doesn't cost much. And so if your, pro if your product or your app is mission critical, I highly recommend that you go through this full methodology and end, I should say, begin the iter iterative process of development uh, by testing your mock-ups in real time. I think you'll find that it's very, very helpful. I call this whole thing 360 degree design because we iterate quickly. We, we involve the business um, folks, the developers, the designers, all the decision makers, and we rapidly prototype and evolve this, this system until we get to a point where it's working uh, just the way we want it to work. Finally, an, an, a, a step that's often skipped is a comprehensive knowledge transfer between the design team and the development team. This isn't a five-minute uh, discussion to say, hey, read my notes that are in the mock-ups. This is actually walking through every single element of the application to make sure that you understand, that the development team understands exactly what you meant, that it's documented correctly, that you have a chance to fix any, any uh, documentation that might not be easily understood. But you want to pass the information you have up here, down to here, and then off to your development team as if it's the last time you'll ever see them. But that should not be the case. Because again, we're going to go through the same process from the perspective of the development team. And that's when we're turning it back over to my partner Keith, who's going to take you through the same 
type of information, but from his perspective. All right, so I'm hoping to show how whenever you've worked together with a designer or any, really anyone else within the company and coming up, up with a good design for your user interface, what kind of results you can expect to, to have. Uh, so I'm sure we're all familiar with this. A typical note shop is a single or a few developers. Uh, you're all in charge of tens or hundreds, maybe even thousands of applications each. Um, and you all sit at your cube or in your office or at your home and you don't really talk to one another about the user interfaces that you're coming up with. Uh, so everybody's applications end up having their own little look and feel and it's not really cohesive. And so that's really where the problem lies, is in the lack of collaboration between developers and no designer because what no shop has a designer. Nobody. I mean, you know, a lot of note shops, the, the note guy is the developer, he's the administrator, he's the support guy, he's, he's everything, right? Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> and, and, and so, because we're so busy, we don't even have time to look at the brand guidelines. We may not even know if there are brand guidelines for our company. And, and so, but that's part of the problem. And IBM, Microsoft, and Google have all validated that this problem exists. They spent millions of dollars, a lot of time, to come up with design standards uh, that are specific to their brands. However, the problem with this approach is, at least with IBM and Microsoft, they didn't provide us any tooling to help us implement their cool design guidelines. We, we just get a document, and we have to read it and, and try to figure out how to implement it. Uh, maybe even create our own UI elements. And, and so there's a learning curve that goes along with that. And also these standards try to be everything to everybody, but they don't match your company. Maybe the colors are wrong, uh, just the, your users don't understand the concepts being dis, uh, explained in these documents, so they don't match your unique needs. Another way to say that, if you don't mind just chiming in, is, is that the user experience doesn't match uh, the expectations from the company, right? And so they, they, wow, this looks a lot like Google, but it doesn't look a whole lot like IBM. Exactly. So why should you care? I mean, is this stuff really important? It, 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 it is. And the reason why is because most of the notes applications were not developed by professional designers or, or professional developers. A, a, a lot of the really old notes applications were developed by Susie down in HR, who has had no formal IT training, don't know anything about creating a good user interface, but she needed something that met her needs that, that solved her particular business problem, and she went about developing it, and other people found it useful, and it's still being used in the company today with little or no, no change in the last 15 years. It's that now that Notes has been brought in under the IT umbrella, people are starting to look at this stuff a little more closely. And they're saying, well, this sucks, <laughs> right? We, we've heard it our entire careers. Oh, this is why Notes is going away. This sucks, it's hard to use. Well, Susie and HR developed it. And, and so... Not that there's anything wrong with Susie. Yeah, no, there's no problem with Susie. She's not just a developer. Keep your mouth right. <laughs> <laughs> and so... The notes client is fading away partly in, in, in cause of this. And uh, it's being replaced by modern applications that need professional developers, professional designers looking at it because this is what our companies are expecting. And so as developers, we have a couple of options. Uh, become a good designer, which takes a lot of time. You're having to read and design, yeah, you have to go to school. <laughs> or spend months and months of time reading and trying to figure things out and coming up with your own UI elements, and you could end up with something worse than what you began with. <laughs> <laughs> and so our second option is uh, to, to get someone like Bob involved. Uh, 
which is really good. It's a good thing to do. However, there uh, is quite an investment because now you have someone else on salary. And so, but it, there are some tools that it's, most developers, uh, maybe with not a lot of resources, they're out there that will allow us to deliver a better product uh, and at least give the illusion that we've consulted the design guy. Okay. <laughs> so we've got uh, Bootstrap. Uh, I can't say enough about Bootstrap. It's very brand agnostic. E even as a designer, I am a big proponent of Bootstrap. Yes, I, I mean, you can make some really great UIs without a lot of effort. Uh, just follow the examples on their website. Mm -hmm. it, it's that easy. Uh, there are hundreds of themes out there. A lot of them are free. You can change the look in your site in five minutes. Just change the CSS file. An expensive bootstrap theme is $25. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, free, free does come with its, its, its limitations. But again, somebody who, uh, like Keith, who's very industrious, um, can take a good bootstrap theme and turn it around into something really fantastic and very unique uh, without a lot of effort. Uh, there's also polymer elements out there. Uh, if you've not heard of these, these are web components. Uh, they're basically custom HTML tags with functionality built into them. Uh, there's Kendo UI, which offers uh, some great UI elements. Uh, they are not free, however. And there are dozens more. Uh, Foundation UI, I think, is another big popular one at the moment. And so, after uh, Peter and Nathan attended Phil Gilbert's session at Photosphere, uh, they came to the conclusion that, hey, we need to start looking at this stuff. And so I went out looking for something that was very uh, mobile friendly, uh, that would work on mobile, on desktop. Uh, I really didn't want a bootstrap. And why I didn't want it, I don't know. I, I just knew at the desktop what I wanted to do. Because it didn't have a very native feel on a mobile device, I think was the biggest struggle. And so we started looking at Polymer Web Components. And I actually started putting together our portal. Uh, it, it was mainly a prototype just to mock up to see what it would look like, how easy is it to use, that sort of thing. And I really liked it. And I did this before we brought Bob on. And, uh, but however, due to the complexity of the data we were trying to, uh, uh, to show on, on a small screen, I ended up with the same problem I had in the previous version using Bootstrap was that I just had too much stuff on the screen. It, it, it was complicated. It, it didn't feel natural. To, it wasn't something easy to use. And, and so that's really the problem that I as a developer was having, trying to, to come up with a solution. Yeah, so the, the, the problem is not just simply the lack of components or the lack of guidelines. It's also understanding, the, the, again, the UI and the UX problem, right? And how to uh, position the various components, when to show something, when not to, sh to show something, if something is complex, showing it in phases. And that's more than just uh, an element, right? That's more than just an interactive element. And so our results uh, have been really, really well. Everyone that I've shown our new stuff to really well. Uh, so this is our previous version of our portal. Uh, from this screenshot, you notice it's kind of dark, hard to read. You probably can't even read applications right there. There's also a button here to make this list editable. Okay. Yeah, sure, there's a little icon there. What does it do? Here's our search bar. Okay. Yeah, it says search application, so you're searching your application. That's fine, but when you hit enter, it doesn't, you gotta click the. Mm -hmm. gotta and this is not because, I should point out, because Keith sucks as a designer. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's this is one of the complex. most popular selling bootstrap themes. Yes, and it this is. is what we were given. Was, uh, it looks a little one UI ish, right? It, is. it does, yeah. 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 And again, it's because uh, it, it, uh, the, the issue with templates in general is, again, that they have to be all things to everyone, right? right? Yeah. And so, um, again, like, Lowest common denominator. Yeah, that's right. It, it appeals to the lo lowest common denominator. And as Keith said before, it gives the illusion that you've consulted with uh, some, a professional, but when you really start pulling back the layers, you start to, to find the weaknesses of, of a template. Also, I mean, just from the sheer complexity, 
What does this thing do? Who knows? We, we've got more yeah. complexity up here, more stuff up here it needs to be. Because um, as NOS developers, we were trained to use every little empty space mm -hmm. to put something in, like action bars. Well, right. we just keep adding actions to the action <laughs> bars, right? Because yeah. yeah. there's space. <laughs> and if we didn't fill up the space, we were defective as a program because <laughs> we hadn't used all the space. Uh, we see a lot of the same complexity here in showing the view. It, it's all still there. And now, so Bob introduced the concept of uh, no documentation standard for, for the UI design. And you land on this now. It's very simple. We have a menu here for a frequently asked questions, submit feedback, our user profile, and that's it. I mean, you can't break anything either. So that's yeah. So this would be similar to our home page on the previous version. Here we now have a, a list of applications, a single search, user profile, the meet the help and support is still there. It's very simple. We still have all the same elements that we had on the previous version, but with with help from someone who understood how a user experience should go. This was our result. I mean, it, it looks nice and it's much easier to use. And so, and, and this is just another example, uh, we still have all the same interactions here and yet it is still something simple and easy to understand. Can, can I just point something out real quick? Sure. Because it's easy, easily overlooked. So um, before, you could drill down into the facets of the views but it was a very complex process, right? And so we want to make sure that everything is contained, uh, has some context. So this container that we have here for IBM um, also shows the facets of the data that also relates to IBM. So everything is self-contained. You really don't need any instructions in terms of how to dig in a little deeper to find exactly what it is that you're looking for. And so we put this in front of our customers and what were they saying? It's simple. I understand what the stuff on the screen means, what what I expect to happen when I click on it. The interface is easy to use. And these are quotes from our customers putting this thing in front of people during the development process. It wasn't, okay, I've, I've got to what I think is a stopping point here, can you take a look at this? It was, okay, I've got this screen, can you take a look at it and tell me what you think? And also, I didn't need help navigating or finding information. Things were obvious of, okay, what they should expect to happen when somebody clicked on something. Now, Keith, I'm, I'm not in the habit of correcting um, some that I'm presenting with or working side by side with, but I want to correct one thing. <laughs> well, we're um, both engaged you, in this throughout this process. So. <laughs> <laughs> At this point. You, 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 you said um, that as a result of, of what I did of, of my hire, um, this, this was just as much Keith as it was me. So I'm going to be clear about that. Um, is, a, is a collaboration, a, tr a real, real time collaboration. So I appreciate you giving me credit, but the credit has to be given back to you just as much. Yeah, I mean, we would spend hours on the phone talking about single screens or just single elements within the screen and coming up with different ways to show it. And, and I don't know, the, the results are really, at least I think that the results turned out 200% better than our previous version. Okay, so what should you expect if you were to engage someone like Bob? Expect a lot of collaboration, a lot of back and forth. Yes, you'll argue, uh, but you have to come up with the common ground. And you'll end up with a better product because of it. Uh, your users and your supervisor will definitely notice a difference. So. At one of our customers, I helped one of the developers uh, who had been developing X pages that looked like regular Notes apps. Uh, we helped him, Bob helped also. I helped with uh, teaching him how to use Bootstrap and uh, 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 Backbone and Marionette. And he came up with a very nice UI that he put in front of the supervisor who said that it's probably one of the best user interfaces he had seen within his company. So. It does make a difference. Also, you'll get to move some stuff off your plate. Making decisions for your UI, 
are you following the brand? All this goes to the UI guy. And I can talk to that having had Keith work for me prior to engaging Bob. It was frustrating because this is a brilliant JavaScript developer and he was losing hours and hours and hours playing with CSS. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it's, it, it's almost there, but it's just not looking right. When you, It's working on Chrome, but it's no longer working on Safari. Yeah. And yeah. as a manager is trying to meet customer expectations, it's very frustrating to know that we're so close, but my young JavaScript developer is wasting all his time trying to figure out why the browsers are inconsistent. And so there's a big difference to have someone that can do that, and so I can keep this guy focused on what he does best. He's okay at CSS and HTML, but he's very, very good at JavaScript, and that's what I want to keep him programming. Uh, also, now you wait, 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 wait. I do have a question about that. Well, you're a designer who's actually doing the CSS in so. um, it's, it's a collaborative effort. Yes. So we, we, both, we both do it. Um, okay. So um, actually, in, a, in, in an ideal situation, we would have a, a, a third member of the team who would be a specialist in CSS. So, I mean, I know enough CSS to get by. Uh, he knows probably a little bit more than I do. But there are folks that I know that would run circles around both of us. Um, at some point in time, we'll get to the point where we have a, a dedicated and CSS person. As, as an example, Bob has contract the contacts that we're using in South America, who he can get very good rates on, and he can just send them send them work and get because that sort of work. It's very easy to, to crowdsource or outsource. Mm -hmm. And once the tables are built. Once the table, once those table, so what I'll do is I'll, 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 fill, I'll basically uh, create a table uh, with basic CSS, and then um, uh, put together a spreadsheet with all of the other components that we need in the CSS. He'll do the programming, and then send it back to us. And from that point, uh, either one of us can handle that. So there's good workarounds, but eventually we'll probably have a dedicated CSS person. And also, you get to concentra concentrate on the functionality of your application. Which I know as a Nose developer, that that's really what I always like doing. I like building, you know, cool stuff. But yeah, if it looked good, yeah, okay, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I like to make I like making things that look great and that work great, and the fact that uh, you know you can make them work the way I want. Them, that's a bonus. <laughs> I want to you know, add one, one one thing to that too. Um, and this is just, uh, they're not expecting this, and, and it's not really directly related to what we're talking about here, but this is a dream gig for me because as a designer, working with three of the smartest, most capable programmers in the world um, is amazing because there's nothing you can't do. And we're, we're, we're getting ready to show that with some upcoming projects. But just having, but being a designer who has a team that understands exactly what my role should be and appreciates what I do, and understands the value of what I do, it makes it also easier to sell that into our customer base. Mm -hmm. And it's not as expensive as you think. Um, it's I'm not getting three hundred million just yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's definitely worth uh, the conversation with whoever it is that you're working with to say, hey, can we bring a UI or a UX expert? It depends on what it is. If it's just interface, then just need the UI. If it's a, if it's a total brand experience you're trying to create, you really need a UX expert, um, which is really my forte. So. Um, with that, um, thank you. Yep. And That's we it. hopefully we've left enough time for some yeah, questions. Yes, absolutely. So, um, is there any? Do you have any questions, or do you want to chat about how to get around town, or, <laughs> <laughs> or do you just want to get the hell out of here? <laughs> yes. Quite. Yes. Quick. I mean, so let's let's talk about one UI. Okay. I mean, some some of us, you know, got into apps pages, got this application layout, you know, spent all the time to do with it, and are doing some one UI stuff. And I look at it, and some people like it, some people don't. What do you, what, what, what should I do with my, with my one UI stuff? Should I? Do you customers you? like it? Some of them. Some of them do. It, it, it's a strange set of customers. That are, but, but, <laughs> so far, no one's complained, but, that's, but that does right. not. What, I just want your view on one. On, what, what do you? So in the newest version, since you're saying one UI, I assume this is X pages. Y yeah, unfortunately, so I'm running an old server, so I'm not on version three. I mean, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, so version two. I'm not sure which. I think it was in 901. Yeah. Fix back three. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, they actually included the bootstrap for yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm not. Okay. My, my client UI, is not. My client is not. One UI is better than no UI. Yes. <laughs> yes. <So it's> not, <laughs> <laughs> because and one UI was created because people were starting to build X pages apps and they're looking like yeah. notes apps. 
<laughs> right? So they needed to provide some assistance. One UI is a bit like, we were producing a product not that long ago that was not unlike you, One UI, and at the time, we thought it looked pretty good. Right, until Bob came along and <laughs> pointed out a few things. <laughs> so if you're using One UI, you're ahead of the game. You're doing something worthwhile. Sure. But, sure. Yeah, sorry? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I thought you were... Uh, what I was then going to say is, if you heard Adam speak yesterday morning, IBM have evolved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What they're doing now is light years ahead of One UI. I've had conversations with Pete about this while he's Pete Jansen, the product manager, while he's been here, about how quickly can he get tooling yeah. Yeah. into for X pages to start implementing that because it's going to be beyond the budgets of most of you people in this room to implement IBM's design language into your notes apps. Yeah. So we all need to be talking to Pete <laughs> about getting some of the IBM design language into X pages because otherwise your only alternative is to hire someone that, or engage them in some way that's going to give you the toolkit because trust me, you want to be writing code, you don't want to be, you'll be in there for years trying to reproduce something like the IBM design. Like so, so Peter, um, um, that's exactly how I would have answered that. It's, con it's contextual, right? So if you're coming from notes, then one UI, even an early version of one UI is going to be right. fantastic. But until you get to the boot bootstrap, you're going to have a lot more control over that. And even beyond that, once there are additional controls um, uh, that are released. Okay then it's going to make one UI look pretty primitive. If I could have a follow-up in it. Not, not Only one. one. Yeah, I'd be fine. I really don't like it. But, but, but for example, one of the, in one of the sessions I was in, you know, there's, there's an option I have would be to, 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 to scrap the layout region and, and just go with a native, a native bootstrap. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is absolutely. And I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, I mean, I'm just, I've got a particular project that I've got on my plate it's on, a, if it's, on, it's on a laptop somewhere lo locked up in, yeah. in the thing. I'm, I'm deciding that. Yeah, if you're comfortable with that process, I highly recommend yeah. that that's the way you go. I, I, really, I really do. Um, you had something you were going to say. Yeah, no. Uh, once I discovered Bootstrap, okay. I, I stopped using when you I. Okay. The, the, Even though the Bootstrap stuff I made at that time really didn't look that good, it still looked better than when you when you are there. And you Mike, have, Mike, are you, are you using Bootstrap? Yeah, actually I am, and I've done a lot of that where I load. I'm not... Because when I first started, we didn't have the extension library in there, mm -hmm. so we, I, I used, well, I used it off the extension library, so it's not built and, there, and if you're, so and I haven't using that library. If you're creative and you know CSS, you can do anything with, with Bootstrap. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, I, like I said, as a designer, I, I use it all the time as a starting point, so yeah. highly recommend it. Yeah, I have a theme and I have a custom CSS file that I load at the end and that overwrites, you know, the background colors and things I... That, that we want to make custom to our company. What I suggest is that you use child themes, uh, especially if you're, if you're using, um, well, there's a way to use a child, like in WordPress, there are, uh, there's a concept called child themes, right? There is a, essentially a way to do the same thing with Bootstrap. Um, just look up, you can, Google, yeah, yeah. you can Google it. Yeah, it's right there on their website. Okay. You can customize the thing. Uh, and that way you don't the, break the initial code. The, right. the, the, yeah. the, 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 the core code. Right. And my problem with the, the customization tool there is you can spend an awful lot of time if you're running on battery, your laptop shuts down, you just lost your four hours of work you just did to make customizations. Uh, so the idea really would be to create your own CSS file that just overrides bootstraps. Um, but, but that functionality is there or get involved in and get the less code because Bootstrap is built on less. You can actually get that code and make the changes there and have your own Bootstrap thing. I'm, I'm going to have a question for all of you before we break, but I don't, I don't want to uh, miss any questions from the audience. So who, who else has a question for us? No? So, sure. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so I have a question for you all. Um, first of all, and, and please know that there is no ego involved with this. We really want to know. We want to learn. Um, how, by a show of hands, how many people uh, got something out of today's presentation? Yeah. Excellent. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. And, um, and then also, um, is there anything that we didn't cover that you might like to see us cover in the future? Um, perhaps some, some examples are always nice of the different stages of your, your wireframe and then adding in the, you know, started here and then after that. Yeah, we really cut that, we really compressed that, yeah. right. I would like that too, thank you. That's good. Yes? And maybe just some principles of 
Do this looks better than this, or always try to do something yeah. like this, or yeah. you know, yeah. sure. and why no clue. Clear. Because yeah. a lot of times he would think, no, no, you don't want to do it that way. You do it this way. It's like, and but so why? It's, why? It's almost yeah. the same thing. Why? Mm -hmm. there, the, why is a big yeah. part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or, that or that we just don't even see it, you know? Exactly. It's just like once you bring it to our attention, then we'll always see that. You know? Right. Yeah. The, the, the more you surround yourself with good design, the more you understand it and the more it makes sense to you. So um, that's actually a very good example. And I, I encourage everyone to go out there and look for good design, look for things you like, um, try to mimic the things that you see that you like. That's that's a good way to start. So did you want to yes. re-ask the question that you asked before? Because I wanted to get some evidence. Of okay, sure. <laughs> So let me just say, here's... Uh, I want a pay rise. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> what's your name? Roy. Roy uh, just said color theory. And I have to say, um, that was a concentration of mine in my studies, is color theory. Uh, the psychology of color is a, is a very important uh, aspect of what we do. There are books uh, on psychology of color, uh, particularly in interactive uh, situations. They're, it's extremely important. Um, we could do a whole session oh, just on color, easy. okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a very good uh, a suggestion. Great website if you want color ideas Visibone. Vis oh, Visibone, yeah, absolutely. If you don't know about Visibone.com, go to Visibone. V-I-S-I-B-O-N-E. There's also oh, color lovers. Okay, for the, for, lovers. For, for the sake of, 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 of a photo, uh, um, <laughs> one more time, uh, if uh, raise your hand if you uh, got something out of this session, if you found it helpful. Thank you. <laughs> yes. yes, a lot of the stuff I was doing, he's saying, well, you can't do that. That's because right. People there so it's like you you're trying to spot Roy, really, huh? red pill changed its color scheme. Did it work? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, as the other thing is, um, my cousin my cousin works for IBM in mobility. He's blind, and he works with the developers in IBM to make sure the websites, the screen readers work. Yes. Mm -hmm. the same so, idea. As a side note, um, and in case you all, <laughs> Any of you ever need this service, um, we can help. Uh, uh, Redbook can help you with this. Um, I, w I designed the first uh, fully uh, visually compatible, or uh, let's say, uh, uh, visually, impaired. Impaired. visually impaired compatible website that worked with JAWS and other screen readers mm -hmm. for the Center for Visually Impaired. So they 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 never had a, 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 a compliant site before, uh, and and so I got a chance to work with them both the local and the national level, and it's uh, it's great. It's a great honor to work with those guys. Um, thank you all for coming to our session. I hope you've had a great time. Before, did someone, did someone else help uh, No, you? I was, one thing that, um, I work for a major airline, I guess, I guess. Um, we, uh, Are there any non-major airlines? <laughs> we just merged. Okay. Okay, I work for American. And, um, so, well, I actually used to, used to work for US Airways, so a smaller company. We, uh, we had all of our branding, all of our apps are internal. Um, we did work at the time with all of our branding, with our internal branding um, .net group, um, our website group, and you know it was fantastic. And we had some really nice feedback from them. So now that we are this big, huge company, and obviously American has a lot of branding, and, and they're very specific as to their websites, but everything's internal. So I'm I'm struggling with turning our CSS over to these guys who don't even know how to spell notes, um, don't know what notes is, never heard of it before. Um, but I don't know. I guess how how do you handle that? I mean, do you just hand over the CSS and say, "Give me a CSS," or do we do we interact? Do I bring now, bring them when in? When I was at Sprint, we went through this same thing uh, because I was there at the time. They changed their colors from they bought a next next tell yeah. yeah next tell and then. Sprint's colors changed from red to yellow, yellow yeah. along with totally different fonts. Right. Uh, so, so I, I, I actually went through this. You, you have to work with these guys yeah. and tell them, uh, I understand your site. issues. And they have a branding site, so I've got the color scheme, you know, and I've got the fonts and the, and the graphics. And, and they probably have HTML templates for things like the header and, that I have and not sidebars. Been able to find yet. Yeah. It, it's fairly easy to in incorporate yeah. these things yeah. and then just get their CSS. Yes, they'll be manual for you because every time it changes, you'll have to go get it again. Right. But that's the way yeah, that's what that we've been I was doing able right to now. We've been piece parting it in based on their brand's website, um, but, but we haven't actually worked with them on anything. Piloting is important. To give you an example, at Red Pill, we kind of like the color red. 
right? So <laughs> when we see red, we don't react like most most folk tend to. One of our customers is the, is the Salvation Army. One of the first exercises we gave Bob was to find out what their true brand guidelines are and then put it into notes client applications. We found the guidelines and the guidelines said this is the colour set that you use and guess what colour? Red. Yeah. We looked at it and said, yeah, it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like yeah, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> And we put it out there and immediately with this, we, and we just did it with one notes app. We put it out, there. it looked really cool, but there was a, a, a moderate amount of red in it. And we got the reaction. And we got the reaction in time. And Bob was then able to go back in to the marketing people and say, do we have a plan B? Is there something else not red that we could use that is still the Salvation Army? And we got an alternative pattern that was using black and grey that was allowed. And we then put that back and took it back to the same people and said, oh, a lot better. Yeah. So yeah. There, was well, just, there was just the colour change. Yeah, yeah. 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 Iteration that we talked about. That's the yeah. With the US Airways Blue, it was amazing when we would get an American person, um, legacy American mm -hmm. person, they would look at our website and they're like, oh, that's ugly. It's like, well, it's blue. Well, it's not the American blue. And it's like, okay, you're right. Right. <laughs> well, It's like Coca Cola, right? Yeah. 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 It, 181's no good. Did you use this yeah. three, three of us lights? Yeah. In my deck, because I use a lot of color, I love MW Lug, so I put the logo up on my first slide. And from then I drop it because blue is contrasting with two, with whatever else is going on. So you have to you have to find balance. Yeah. Hmm. I bet. By the way, I've been through that with a, a half a dozen mergers with very large companies, and it's it's it. I I, I hate to tell you this, it's just a long arduous process. It really is. It is. Yeah, um, we've been slowly changing all of our our logos and everything, the CSS and all of that. If you can get a brand expert involved. And, and uh, I would, yeah, I've, I've been wanting to, but the rest of the group has yeah. kind of been fighting me because they think they have internal people that can handle it, and I say go no straight to the, the what I consider the experts. Well, if, um, if you need a recommendation, just call us. We'll be happy to point you in the right direction. Okay? All right, everybody? Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. For those